G'day friends, it's Andrew Goodall here again from Nature's Image Photography with the latest in a new series of videos looking at my editing process from the original RAW file to the finished photo in Adobe Camera RAW. This time the subject is this rainbow lorikeet coming in to land on the tree it calls home. But before we get started I'll invite you to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already to keep in touch with everything from my world of photography. I'd also like to let you know that I've uploaded this photo to my collection on Redbubble where you can purchase my pictures as prints and greeting cards along with a whole range of gift products. So if you love the photo or if you simply want to support me and my work at Nature's Image Photography you'll find the Redbubble link in the details below. Now let's begin with the essential camera information. This shot was taken on my Panasonic Lumix G9 with the Leica Panasonic 100-400mm lens. ISO was 320, aperture f5.6 and the shutter speed was a 1250th of a second. The trickiest part was the focus because there was no way I could focus on the bird quickly enough as it flew in. So instead I focused where I expected the bird to land and then fired away in high speed burst as the action happened. I wanted to mention that because the focus will become relevant as you watch this video. So now this is where I stop reading from the script and go to my editing process in real time. For the rest of the video if it sounds like I'm making things up as I go, well that's because I am. And if you can hear a lot of bird noises in the background I actually had a whole lot of rainbow lorikeets outside my window as I was recording. Now here's my editing process from raw file to finished photo. So our editing adventure begins as they always do here in Adobe Bridge. This is the cataloging software where I organize my files and select which ones I'm going to work with. You can see from this folder I've had a good afternoon out with the rainbow lorikeets. Uh, I've got them up in trees, I've got them down on the ground and I got a nice little sequence where they were all quite active around this branch. Um, there's actually uh, a family of birds that lives inside that hole there. So um, I took quite a lot of shots of different activity and this was the shot I would have liked to be able to use um, as the bird spread its wings and was just flying away but unfortunately it turned its head away from the camera and I ended up with a photograph that's not quite workable so uh, I was also happy then to get the, uh, the next sequence as the bird flew into the nest and if we have a look through those I've got two I'm really happy with. There's this one which was the one I was thinking of using because I like that shadow so much but with the bird's wings right up against the very top of the photograph there it doesn't leave me a lot of room for, for cropping and arranging maybe how I'd like the photograph to look and the bird is still so far from the nest uh, that I think overall it's going to be hard to get a composition that really works for that shot. So uh, the one I've decided to work with is this one. Um, the bird's now a lot closer, the eye is really on the spot where it's going to land so I think there's a great connect connection there uh, and being closer to the nest uh, I think the whole photograph is going to fit together better. Uh, it's going to need some cropping because I've got this bird up here and branch out of focus that I really don't want in the shot uh, but we'll come to that. So let's double click here in Bridge and that's going to send the photograph across to Adobe Camera Raw and this is now where I'll be doing my editing. Uh, so here we start uh, with, you can see my basic editing screen open, but before I go to editing I want to start with a crop. Um, I've said in the previous videos that I prefer to crop first and edit later so that when I am editing, I'm editing the photograph I expect to see as my finished result um, rather than uh, editing first and then cropping out half the details at the end. So um, I've got a couple of options and quite often I use a 2 by 3 crop because um, that's more your traditional photo format and if I was going to frame this to hang it on a wall or uh, expect to put it into um, a book or something like that I might be looking at a 2 by 3 crop uh, and it's not hard to find a fairly balanced look uh, with a, a 2 by 3 but because this is going to go into a, uh, a YouTube video and the standard screen format for YouTube is 16 by 9 uh, I'm going to use a 16 by 9 crop if for no other reason then it'll make a better YouTube thumbnail for me so um, uh, there's all sorts of reasons why we make our decisions and uh, these sort of things have to be taken into consideration so I'm trying to get the balance there again I don't want that little bit of corner of the bird coming into the shot because it's a bit of a distraction so I'm just going to crop it around about there um, maybe bring things in a little bit more, a bit tighter, no I don't want to bring it down because that'll chop off the tops of the wings even more 
So I guess we'll stop our cropping. Hmm. This is more art than science. Uh, sometimes you just got to stop when things look about balanced and I think that's about there. So that's where I'm going to stop. So if I now click enter on my keyboard, that locks our crop in place. Um, my mouse or my cursor currently is a magnifying glass so if I click on that it takes it to full screen and this is now the photograph I'll be working on. Uh, so we come back to the, uh, the basic area here and it's time to get started. So despite the, back, the fact that Photoshop has so many different uh, features and functions, really the majority of my editing gets done just right here in the basic editing area. Uh, so uh, Photoshop doesn't have to be as complicated as people tell you that it is, uh, if you uh, prefer, like I do, to just keep it simple. Uh, now I start here with the very top slider, which is exposure. Uh, overall you can see the photograph's a bit dark, in particular in the shadows, but overall I think the photograph probably just needs a little bit more exposure. So I'm going to grab the expo exposure slider and take it across to the right a bit. And I'm not looking at every detail of the photograph here. I'm just looking at the overall picture and asking myself that on balance is that about as bright as I want my photograph to look. And I think I'm going to stop about there. Remembering that with these sliders you can always revisit them later. So if I adjust something else and it affects the look of the picture I can always come back and um, adjust exposure again. Uh, but I think that photograph looks about as bright as I want it to look. Uh, next I'm going to come to shadows slide that across to the right a bit because really um, a lot of the best colour in this bird is in this area here and it was a bit lost uh, in those darker shadows so bringing the shadows across to the right uh, I'm bringing some of that colour out. Now with all these sliders you want to try to be subtle and don't do it obviously. Uh, you can grab shadows and take them 100% across uh, but then the photograph looks very flat because if you don't have some lifelike shadow in the photograph it loses its three dimensional quality. So uh, I'm going to go back to zero and then slide it across enough to let you see some colour but not so much that we sort of rob the photograph of all its natural shadow. Um, so there I think we're already making progress. I had a feeling at the start this photograph was going to need a lot of work but in fact it's only going to need a, a surprisingly little. Next I'm going to come to whites and blacks. This is where I set the, uh, the limits of the, the brightest and darkest parts of my photograph. If I put my finger on the alt button on my keyboard and, and then click on whites you'll see the screen goes black and if I slide whites across to the right it then just begins to show me where the very hot, brightest highlights are and I just want to bring out a touch of that. I don't want any of the photograph to look overexposed and washed out. So that's basically saying these are the brightest pixels in my photograph and I don't want anything to be brighter than that. Uh, I'll do the same with blacks and there's already a bit of dark in that shot. T truly black means you've got to see black on the screen. Um, but if I just slide it across a tiny bit I don't want to do much at all because there were some dark shadows in here and I don't want to risk losing anything um, there. But at the same time blacks, um, uh, setting the blacks can make the photograph look um, nice and solid and, and three dimensional. Um, now uh, I've done shadows, I've done whites and blacks. I'd also like to do the highlights because the, this part of the tree in particular and down here at the beginning of the, this project there was a fair bit of detail in there but by brightening the photograph up we've lost some of that. So now I'm going to grab highlights and bring them across to the left and now you can see all that nice bark detail coming back into the shot up here. This area that was quite washed out is coming back to life. And also probably the highlights on the bird's feathers are, uh, are enriched a little bit uh, by bringing those highlights down. So that there I'm already pretty happy with and sometimes you can forget when you go slowly like this how far you've come. So there's a little toggle down here that shows you where we started and where we are now. So this gives you a pretty good idea of how much progress we've made already. So let's now take a look at the sliders that I sometimes uh, touch but I've ignored so far. Uh, you've got contrast. now. I don't really want to take any contrast away because that can make a photograph look flat but I'm not sure it really needs me to add any contrast because um, uh, just the fact that the sun was still reasonably bright when this photograph was taken means that there's already a bit of contrast to it and we've dealt with it with highlights and shadows but I'm not really sure I need to add any contrast there. Uh, I've got vibrance down here I'll often um, adjust the vibrance a little bit but there's already a, 
uh, some brilliant colour to this shot and adding more to it I'm not really sure is going to do much. Um, I guess my instincts tell me just to bring it up the tiniest little bit. Um, and I've got clarity too which I often find will take a photograph from looking pretty good to looking genuinely three-dimensional with just a little bit of an adjustment of the clarity slider. Um, but clarity also tends to up the contrast a little bit. So I'm thinking that I'm doing some good things to this photograph but I still don't want to lose anything down here so I'm going to come back to shadows. Remember I said you can always revisit these things. Lift the shadows out just a little bit more and now overall I think I've done most of what I want to do. All that remains in here is um, white balance. Now I have already made the point in previous videos that the Lumix G9 to my eye tends to skew a little bit towards magenta so um, I'll usually come and adjust the white balance and I'll start by um, just clicking auto to see what the computer tells me and actually I think that looks alright except that it was a late afternoon shot and uh, it's taken out the magenta but it's also taken out some of that warmth that um, gives it the, the real feeling of late afternoon light so it's okay but I think we can do better. I'll try daylight. Oh I really don't like daylight. Um, that is just uh, way too yellow so uh, maybe it's just my ego talking but I tend to think I can do better if I just do these things myself. So here I'm just going to grab the tint slider which runs between magenta and green and just move it away from the magenta a little bit towards the left and it just takes some of that sort of artificial redness out of the shot and I can if I want to come up to temperature and if I slide it across to the right that'll warm it up but I don't think it needs it uh, because I think it's warm enough already so I think that gets our color balance pretty good um, so in terms of the overall picture I'm pretty happy um, there is one area that is grabbing my eye. I don't know if it's uh, grabbing yours, but this area at the top of the bird's head, having done the adjustments that seem to suit the rest of the photograph, this is seems to be losing a bit of colour and clarity there because that's where all the reflections shining off the, the glossy surface of the bird. So I've now made changes that affect the entire picture. I'd like to now just work on this little area. So to do that I need to get out of the uh, the basic editing area and come across here to the adjustment brush. Um, the adjustment brush brings up a screen that looks very similar to what we had before um, except that whatever I do now will only be done in the area that I select. Now I'd like to, sorry I'm just going to have to go back to my main screen so I can use my magnifying glass. Let's go to 100%. Sorry this is a bit of a roundabout way of getting there but really maximize the, the size of that part of the photograph. And now uh, come back to adjustment brush and I'd like to make an adjustment that just works on this brightest part with the, the sun shining right on top of the bird's head. So um, I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit. Maybe bring up the contrast here uh, and possibly uh, clarity a little bit. Remember again it's all just subtle. Um, and possibly bring the blacks down a little bit. So now those changes, which I can revisit if I need to, will be made only in the area that I wave my little wand over. And I actually think again it's, it's subtle but it just takes that washed out look out of the photograph and makes it look, let's bring the highlights down a little bit, makes it look a little bit enriched uh, compared to what we had before. Now if I click on the mask up here it shows me the area that I've worked on. You can see that it's not the whole bird. Uh, it's just really focused on the area of that bit of sunlight except it's overlapped a little bit up here. So now I'm going to come up to my eraser and if I use the, uh, the bracket keys on my keyboard uh, I can make the hole bigger or smaller. I just want to get rid of where it's overlapped off the bird and onto the surroundings. I'll unclick the mask and now you can see that uh, what I've done has just affected that part of the photograph. If I go back to my main editing screen it looks quite natural but that washed out look is gone and I think that's really brought that little part of the photograph to life and because of course that's where the eye is uh, it's important to, um, to make that part of the photograph successful.
So now we've done our basic editing and we've worked on the head. Now I've really done everything I want to do, I think, in terms of brightness and contrast. So now I work down through the rest of my uh, ladder of uh, different sections here. I don't mess with curves, but I'm going to have a look at detail. Anyone with a keen eye would have noticed when I blew the photograph up to 100% that uh, there was a bit of noise in here. Now this was taken at 320 ISO so it shouldn't really be noisy but when you lighten up shadows a lot uh, that can bring a, a bit of noise up with it so the, it started to bring a bit of uh, extra noise into the shot. So this is where the sharpening and the noise reduction is. I'm going to grab noise reduction and slide it across. Um, it can take the computer a couple of seconds to process because there's an awful lot of pixels in there to be uh, to be worked on. But I've taken that up to about, yeah, let's stop at 25. And that's enough to just take a lot of that speckliness out of the photograph. Uh, and then if I bring up sharpening, I normally stop there at about 55. The default is 40, but I normally bring it up a little bit further. Uh, you can see that the eye is still just a tiny bit soft. I imagine that's a combination of possibly the bird being just a couple of centimetres away from perfect focus, but also maybe a tiny bit of motion blur. Uh, it was a pretty fast shutter speed, but um, maybe there's a tiny bit of motion blur in there as well. So uh, anyway, we'll come back to that in a moment. Uh, so I undo detail, come down through, colour mixer. I don't think I need to really mess with any of the colours there. Um, the colours looked pretty terrific, and, and if you know rainbow lorikeets, um, they look very natural, so I'm happy with that. Um, the um, We've done detail. Optics is where your chromatic aberration is, but I haven't noticed any chromatic aberration in this shot, so I'm not going to mess with that. I will come down to effects uh, and just have a look at a little vignette. So. Vignetting, like anything, is on a slider, and if you go overboard with these things, it's just really obvious and very cheesy. But if I go back to zero, if I slide the vignette tool just a fraction to the left, um, let's just take it down to, let's say, five or six, it just dulls down the outer fringes of the photograph, not in an obvious way, um, but just enough to help draw attention to the center of the photograph. If I just double click that, it takes it back to zero, and you can see that it's just a subtle difference but by dulling down those outer fringes it just helps draw attention to the bird. So there I think is the final touch in what I wanted to do to this photograph. I'm happy with it. Once again you can see where we started and where we finished. Uh, so at this point I think I've done everything I can do. So this is where I'm going to click open and that's going to take uh, the photograph across into the creative side of Adobe Photoshop. So this is the part of Photoshop that a lot of people uh, find daunting because it seems very complicated. Uh, but happily, because 99% of my editing is done in Adobe Camera Raw, I don't need to get into uh, most of these more complicated tools. Uh, I don't even know how to use most of them. Um, my knowledge of this part of Photoshop is fairly basic, um, and I'm happy enough with that, I suppose. Um, but I do want to uh, just let Photoshop check my work, if that makes sense. Um, you can reach a point when you're editing that you're not really sure if you make any more changes. Are you going to make the photograph better or worse? So when I reach this point, uh, I'll come into uh, Photoshop, click Image, and Auto Contrast. Now you can see that's made barely any difference to the photograph at all. If I undo it, click Edit and Undo, it's made almost no difference to the photograph, which to me means I did a pretty good job when I did my editing. Photoshop's uh, contrast result is much the same as mine. Um, now if I go into uh, to really double check, Image and Adjustments, and across to Levels, um, further than uh, just contrast, this adjusts the, um, the blacks, the whites, the highlights, the shadows and the midtones. So it does contrast in a slightly more detailed way. If I click Auto, that's actually um, just lightened the photograph up a little bit and taken some of the heaviness out of that contrast. If we click Edit and Undo and then redo it, to be honest, for once I actually think I like the auto levels better uh, version better. So that's the picture I'm going to uh, settle on uh, as a finished product. All that remains now is for me to uh, to resize and save. So to resize, I come across to image and image size. And for all the things I put into YouTube, I adjust them to 2560 pixels on the long side. Click OK and that just resizes the whole picture. Um, now if we look at that as a 100% view, remember I mentioned earlier on that that eye was just a little bit soft. Now just the fact that I've resized the photograph 
and made everything smaller uh, takes that almost to the point now where um, it looks just about perfectly sharp. Um, just for the sake of finishing off I'm now going to come and uh, just add a tiny bit more sharpness to the, the resized version. So I click Filter, Sharpen and Unsharp Mask and I'm just going to go with the um, the default which is 25 there and that again just tiny that tiny bit of extra crispness it barely makes any difference at all to the photograph but um, for the sake of completeness that's done so this is now the photograph that you're going to see as my finished product when I uh, put out this YouTube video uh, all that remains now is to save I click file export save for web I've said it before and I'll say it again I don't know if this is how everyone does it, but this is how I do it. I click Save. I've already got a folder ready for that photograph to go into. Click Save and we are done. So now you've seen where this photo started, where it finished and how I got there. For the beginners who are just finding their way in Adobe Camera Raw, I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget if you know someone who might like this photo as a gift, you can view it on Redbubble in the link below. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe. I'm Andrew Goodall, this is Nature's Image Photography, thanks for watching.